Did you hear that? Okay. Okay. All right. All right. And you know what? I don't know where that. Okay, good. Because I want to promote this one on Instagram too. Okay. So the hope, just so you know what, logistically, we're we're building or gathering the recordings, and we hope to cut, launch, you know, a big chunk of them all at once, like four or five that just get to go live, and then we'll start doing it more of the regular once a week type of thing. We're just sort of building this right now in the back end on top of the other 500 things we have going on. I, I don't know how this year has received, has become the way that it has, but it's just like, I feel like I can't even keep up with myself right now. So yeah, I talked to Mary at least once a week. So I'm sort of in the loop. <laughs> yeah. Well, and she's like got her own stuff going on too. So it's like between all of us, it's just insane. It's good. It's forward moving energy, but it's definitely like like I told Rob this morning, I was like, God, I've, it's so hard to get back into work after taking some days off. And he's like, that was called the weekend. <laughs> what most normal humans do. Saturday and Sunday off. I'm like, oh yeah, which I do take days off. But anyways, that's where we are. So we're just sort of like forward moving, forward moving. Okay. So Mar- anyways, this will be recorded. I don't know exactly when we'll get them up and up onto the universe or out into the internet yet. It'll always be in the Facebook group, but probably since we're already in April, I would say that we'll probably get that going in June would be my guess. So okay. All right, so now we're recording here and I will officially get us on Facebook Live. And I'm just gonna make sure that we're actually doing my screen share like it's supposed to. You never ever know with my uh, my uh, limited abilities to use the Facebook these days, but I'm gonna go ahead and check and then I'll do an official introduction but I want to make sure, and I'm sure that Mary is probably two steps ahead of me and already in there. I don't even know if she was coming today, but I bet she is. So let's see. Um, I'm going to get in and make sure that it's actually recording our screen. And it looks like it probably is. It is. All right. Hello, everybody. And welcome to our third official uh, recording of the Elena S. Blair podcast. And if you are just tuning into this or you watch it on the replay as a Facebook live, this is a brand new, um, oh, I don't know what you would call it, not idea because a podcast isn't an idea, but a new way that we are reaching our community um, here at Atlanta S. Blair Education. And the plan is to do these recordings always live in the Facebook group. And then our hope is to by the summertime launch them on into the podcast universe so that they can be listened to where all podcasts are listened to. So we're just sort of front loading that now, but our hope is really to, you know, celebrate and nurture this community right here in our Facebook group, because one thing that I am the most proud of, of the, all of the things that are going on with Elena S. Blair education, I'm super proud of how positive our Facebook community is communities, but this one in particular, um, it's a larger community. When you, you know, think about how many people are in here regularly interacting with each other, it's always inspiring and, you know, um, uplifting. It's never kind of some of one, some of the Facebook groups can get kind of yucky. Ours never gets that way. And so one of our goals for this year was how can we nurture this Facebook group? How can we let this Facebook group know that we see them and we appreciate them and having the podcast be recorded live is one of our ways to do that. So that's one of our initiatives. So lo and behold, we have our second guest. I'm going to go right into it. So hello, everybody. If you're here live, you are meant to ask questions. We're hoping the questions will be all answer them all at the end. If you don't make it live, no problem. I'm sure that Lindsay would be willing to come answer them for you here in the comments. But I am super excited to have Lindsay Turner here today with me. Lindsay is from, I was going to say it right, Litchfield, Connecticut area. And um, Lindsay is an acclaimed family, newborn, and school photographer. She's even been on the Today Show, I believe, right? Was it the Today Show? Not quite. NBC New York. (laughs) All right. NBC New York. Whatever. But not yet. (laughs) Same thing. But Lindsay has been... Oh, you know what? I think that my AirPods just... Okay. I just can't hear you. Can you hear me still? No, it's... You're in the other room again. (laughs) Now? Oh, no. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Yes. It took, it, it picked up my AirPods. <laughs> this is what happens when we do things live too. Right. Okay. Are you there? I am. Okay, good. So anyways, Lindsay is an acclaimed newborn family and school photographer, and she's also been a community leader in here in the group for quite some time. So you've probably seen Lindsay in my Facebook community. If you're not a member and you listen to this on iTunes, we'll get you the link in the show notes. But um, Lindsay is a very much, she's a born leader. She, you come in and you share 
information and advice freely without any reservations, which I think that it really does make a leader. I think leaders that really hold back just are kind of holding back from themselves and you don't do that at all. Um, and so I want to want you to just go ahead and introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about yourself. And I, and I forgot to mention that Lindsay is also a very talented branding photographer as well. So please introduce yourself. And then I have some questions for you that I would love to ask. Yeah, sure. Um, so as Elena said, my name is Lindsay Turner. Um, my business is Lindsay Victoria Photography. Um, and I started um, taking pictures when I was little and ended up studying music and circled back to photography um, as a hobby a little later in my life. I spent 15 years as a PR and marketing director for arts nonprofits. Um, and then in about 2016 or so, when I was living in Brooklyn, New York with my family, um, I just started taking pictures. Uh, somebody offered to pay me. <laughs> just like when you think about <laughs> making a living as, as a photographer, it just never occurred to me that that was an option. Um, so I said, yes. <laughs> my first session was an um, in-home maternity. Um, went back to photograph that couple's baby. And then one of my second major shoots, um, which I charged hardly anything for, I'm still embarrassed about, was a branding session um, for a, done that. a furniture builder in Dumbo. Um, and uh, I actually, I charged so little that on the spot as I was leaving the session, he wrote me a check for $100 more than I'd asked for. I was like, I think you made a mistake. He's like, no, I didn't. So that sort of sparked my interest in both arenas very early on. Um, and then my family and I moved to Connecticut. Um, we left Brooklyn. It was a hard transition for me, but it was the right choice in the long run. And when I got here, I just sort of started digging into my local community um, and getting involved any which way that I could. And that is how both that I got settled <laughs> in a new place, but also how I built my brand and my business here. Very so, cool. yeah. There I am. And that, what I want to really, um, but I would love to talk about a little bit because I know that so many people in our community probably could really relate to the, the few things that you said that I know I related to is that a lot of us start because of a personal reason we're taking pictures and somebody notices it. And it might even be like your sister or your aunt or somebody that you really know, but somebody notices and says, hey, will you take pictures of me? And it kind of snowballs from there. That's a really common story. But for some reason, we are almost like, and I'm not saying you are, but I know I was, and I know that a lot of people in our community feel this way. There's almost like a little bit of a like, oh, is that really make me legitimate? Or, you know, is that, is that a real reason that I, to become a photographer, you know, just because of the personal aspect of it. But I actually really think that that like is our superpower. That's why we're good at photographing people. That's why we know how to work with, um, you know, humans, which most of us in here are human photographers. And, um, and we all did those shoots where we charged way too little. That's like a super common thing for those of us in the beginning. It's not a big deal. That's how we start. So speak to that a little bit. How long before you really felt like you, you knew that this was something that was going to be a little more serious? That's a good question. Um, so I started portfolio building in 2016, um, when we still lived in New York and I, became kind of obsessed with learning about the business. Um, I knew how to take pictures. I'd been doing it a really long time. Um, I took all of the material I needed to market my own businesses <laughs> when I was working for nonprofits um, because I had that skill set. So I took all of my own imagery for my flyers and brochures. But when it came to um, getting paid and calling myself a photographer, like to be able to say, hi, <laughs> I'm a photographer. That's what I do. That took a little bit. Um, but it was kind of a mindset shift for me to just decide that I was in it. Um, yep. and then I dragged my feet a little while. We had a transition when we moved back and I am a bit of a perfectionist. So it took me a while to want to, um, finish my website, <laughs> you know, like just, just get it done instead of agonizing over every bit of copy. Um, but mm -hmm. once I felt like I had the ball rolling, I really just leaned into, to building and it takes time. It takes time to build a community. It takes time for people to know your name. Um, and you just kind of keep showing up and keep showing up and eventually it worked. <laughs> so one thing that they, I want to pull out from what you just said is that there part of that mindset shift is simply just saying I'm a photographer. And I, I was like making $50,000 a year and still not saying I was a photographer because I was still a nurse too. So I'm like, well, I'm a nurse. And it was just this like, you know, can I say that? Is this real? Do I believe in myself enough to say that? And so for anyone that's listening right now or, or tuning in, like that simple fact, like I would challenge you today to tell one person that you're a photographer or to say it to the internet, you know, get on an Instagram story and say that you're a photographer, type it here in the comments. I don't care. But that is like such a big shift for us as artists, as people, whatever. And when we start actually just claiming our voice is such a powerful 
um, you know, tool, a powerful mod mod modality to, to taking up space and just saying that you're a photographer is going to make a big difference in your confidence and in how you proceed for sure. Yeah. Um, so the other piece that really helped me is I'm just spending hours and hours taking creative live courses and educating myself in every which way I could. Um, I took a mm -hmm. bunch of your, I took your, I think your posing class was the first thing that I took. Um, and then I tripped into your Facebook group and then I ended up taking, um, you know, you came all the way out to Brooklyn. Um, so I spent some time with you that way. And um, just yeah. the more that I learned, the more I wanted to learn um, about what I didn't know, which was running my own business. Oh my gosh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta mute. I know. I just mute my, mute my notifications. So that is so funny. I was just a guest um, this morning on Darcy Benicosa's podcast. And um, so I was a guest now I'm, now I'm leading this one. And one of the main things that we talked about was that self-education piece. And those of us that have found success and that are really continuing to move upward and to start mentoring other people, we all spend a lot of time and a lot of money on our own coaching, like, like personal coaching, having somebody come and coach us. And um, you just said that exactly. Like, I don't know about money or time, but time you were like, I'm going to take as many classes as I can. Uh, and for some people it's personal, they do it on their own. You know, I'm going to spend time practicing or whatever, but investing in your own education, it's, it's just a game changer. It really changes things. And now I'm a, I'm a forever student. Like I'm a member of a mastermind right now as a student. And it's just, I always just find that I grow so much more when I do that. Yeah. Going from a place to be able to not just be good at taking pictures, but to be able to direct and manage a 60 minute session and get everything that you need and make everybody feel good about it. Um, that was sort of my biggest early takeaways of, of taking your classes is having a whole checklist in my mind of all of the things I was going to work through um, so that I didn't freeze in front of people and not know what to do with them. Yes, great. absolutely. Yeah. Well, that's like the main, one of the main objectives of my classes is because I think we think we, especially if we want to be lifestyle photographers, we see all of these like candid looking photos and we're like, oh, that's cool. All I have to do is just take a family to a pretty field and take some photos. And it's like, no, they don't, they don't do anything until you tell them what to do. That's a, that's a big myth. If, if anyone has not ever realized that, that like, they're not frolicking all on their own. The photographer is the one that made them do that. But yeah, you need a plan for sure. It really helps to have one. And then as you get more and more established, things start to happen. You're doing it on your own. You've made your own plan. You've made everything. Um, you know, you've discovered your own posing and your own techniques and all of that, but it's really nice to have. A, stru a, a structure at the beginning, a framework, if you will. Agreed. So um, one of the things that you do that I I have brought you in to talk to my mastermind about, and I just love it because I think it's such a valuable offer and such a cool way to diversify your income is that you are really, really good at branding photography. And can you explain what that is to our community if they haven't, if you aren't familiar with that term? Because that's one of the, if you're going to be a full-time photographer, you've got to have a way to bridge the slow season or a couple of ways or to really diversify your income. And this is, I love this, this idea. So can you explain that to us? Yeah, absolutely. Um, branding photography is a newer niche. It's obviously starting to take off. You've probably heard the phrase, um, but every single person, whether they work for a firm or they run their own business need they, they are a personal brand, right? Whether they're in an office or whether they're promoting themselves on social media and they run their own, you know, architecture firm or whatever it is. Um, but branding photography, I refer to it sort of as going beyond the headshot. Um, and because my background is in PR and marketing, I think through every single step of exactly what they will need to thrive um, and be able to show up regularly, be able to populate their website. Um, for example, if they have no website at all, obviously they've got to think through their copy. And I encourage them to, to think through what's going to be on their website before we even talk about the images that will help illustrate those things. Um, but if they, you know, let's say they're an interior designer and they want people to understand what the process is to work with them. Well, how do you communicate that in images? Um, so I did a, a large session for an interior designer. I had some of her friends come as models to pose um, as potential clients in a house that she had designed like start to finish with an architect. So it was her in her element in a space she designed where she was comfortable and it showed off her work. Um, so cool. it worked really, really well, but I don't ever let anybody sort of bumble through. We never 80%, 85, 90% of the work is done before we even get to the session um, because I've done a consultation and I've learned about their brand and their why and what they do and who their ideal client is and how they are reaching them. 
um, so that they have, I, the irony is I kind of talk myself out of future work, I've got to work on that. But I think through attire for all seasons, um, levels of formality, uh, depending on what they do um, and a variety of those things so that they have easily 12 months of material to use. So they're not posting a picture curled up in a sweater in June because that feels really incongruous. I do a wardrobe consultation. So not only do they choose the right clothes for their industry, but for themselves and what photographs well, because a lot of people don't know that or don't even know what flatters them or what would be appropriate. Yeah. You know, what happens when you sit and cross your legs? What's it going to look like? Um, all those things we think through in advance so that when we walk in the door for that photo session, everything pretty much is done. So they can relax, they can be at ease. We know what we're looking to accomplish and we just work through it. Mm -hmm. And then they have a, at least a year. I mean, I have clients who've been using the same material for three or four years now, um, which yeah. again, <laughs> I've talked myself out of future work. Maybe I shouldn't do such a good job. Um, but I really want them <laughs> to feel like whenever they are planning their content and they have something to say, they're not Googling stock images or like scrounging through backup hard drives to find a, try to find something that might illustrate what they're talking about. They have them at their fingertips. Yeah, totally. That's amazing. Well, and, um, you know, one thing that I always think about or what people, I guess what I want to say is that people always have, when it comes to pricing, right, we're, we have a hard time pricing ourselves as artists, as, as creatives, but this is such a no brainer to me in like, you are literally providing value in a way that is going to their, their ROI to have professional photos of your business in 2022 no matter what business you run, you're an online, you're online. business. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, it, it, even like my friend has a new wine bar and they're an online business, even though they need you to come into the wine bar, there's some social media strategy and an email strategy and website stuff and all of these things. So we need good quality, high quality content. And I also think that because of the influential, you know, people on all of the social media platforms, subpar content doesn't perform well anymore. You can't just have a crappy photo and call it good. You have to have high quality content and that's what you are providing for them. So it's really very, I hope, so if you're getting, giving them three years worth of content, I, probably you just need to raise your prices. I, yeah, <laughs> I did this year. I did this year. <laughs> okay. And that's what you can say to them though. What a selling point. Like, Hey, I'm going to give you, we're going to do this really great shoot and you're going to have a couple years worth of content. Like that's amazing. And the other uh, piece about branding photography that I love is marketing is so much easier because they're all publicly online. So if you're marketing to families, you know that you might have a lot of potential yeah. clients who are who have private accounts and you can't see them. And does it feel kind of creepy to follow them or inappropriate if you don't know them and they're strangers? But every business has a public facing social media. Um, so you start following them and you start messaging them and giving them helpful, helpful, helpful tips or just sharing their content on your page as a local business and champion them, um, even if they're not even your client yet. Um, I'm a huge proponent for getting involved in your community on whatever level is important to you. Um, so I started by volunteering at my son's school when we first moved here, and now I'm the vice chair of our economic development commission. And I dreamed up a tourism campaign that my town didn't have and desperately That's needed so cool. and figured out how to fund it and raised almost $40,000 to make it happen and launched it all in the last 12 months. But doing that, it, obviously- That's it's, so cool. It's in my area of interest and I love it. It's a ton of work and it's volunteer work, but it also puts me in front of a lot of people who might not have known about me as a brand or what, that, or what I do. Um, so- I, I'm able to couple the things that I'm good at with. Um, so t talk about that a little bit. So what, and, and this is called, this is what I call, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, this is cooperative business development. And, but talk to me about how you, why you decided they needed this campaign and how you were able to even get in touch with the right people to make that happen. Um, so not this past election cycle, but the election cycle before, um, the year before COVID hit, uh, we my town, uh, there was a woman running for first select person. We hadn't had a female first select person in 30 years. And this is a pretty wow. progressive area, like it, a lot yeah. of New York weekenders. And it just, it was staggering to me. So I, I met her as she was campaigning and was very impressed and immediately pulled her aside and said, how can I help you? You know, do you need imagery? Do you know how to use social media? What can I do to support you? And we got her elected. And the first thing she said after she got elected was, okay, what are you going to do next? I was like, what do you mean? She was like, what border commission are you going to join? It's like, what are you talking about? So she yeah. immediately, she was like, I can't lose your energy. Where, where do you want to volunteer your time? So it was sort of a foregone conclusion that I was going to get involved uh -huh. because she's such an engaging leader. <laughs> um, and I knew she cared about our town and I did as well. So that it was just a really obvious fit for me um, to join the economic development commission because 
there's just so much mm. about growing business that was interesting to me. I'd worked for local nonprofits for so long. Um, and the why did I start a tourism campaign uh, was I sort of looked around my community and there were neighboring towns um, in my county doing great work, doing a great job online with major budgets. And our town is 300 years old. We have the first law school in the country. Like it has a lot going for it, but there was no online presence. There was no place to go and learn about it other than, you know, the town website where you could learn about filing your taxes, which is not what you want if you're visiting yeah. a place or want to come for the weekend. Um, and I didn't have the budget and I knew how to write grants because I'd worked for nonprofits. So I just <laughs> made it happen. Wow. But that's it, so it, impressive. Time. Yeah. Thanks. Now, how do you, can you, can you tie that to, and it's okay if you can't, but can you directly tie that to growth in your personal business? Um, absolutely. Um, on a lot of different levels, um, I remain present. Um, you know, I attend local chamber meetings and there's a local women's networking group that I attend whenever they have meetings and I invite other young people. Um, the other thing, and again, this is just my sort of happy place, but I, I enjoy people and I enjoy making people feel welcome. I happen to grow up here, so I feel very connected to the area. Um, but I'm also the, I sort of inherited the local Facebook mom group. The woman who'd been running it was about to have her third child. And she messaged me and said, you seem like, you know, a lot about the area. Would you mind taking over as the admin of our Facebook group? And I almost said no, but then I thought, you know what, this is a good place for me to be. Yeah. So as people start to join the group and they move to our area, I would message them to welcome them and let them know if they have any questions or if you'd like to meet for a walk or a cup of coffee. So I've welcomed with no ulterior motive, really. I mean, you have wow. to do it from your heart. I've welcomed so many new young moms and families to town. So they ask questions, I'm helpful. And then guess what? I'm top of mind, you know, Oh, by the way, I'm a photographer, but I'm not in, in those groups, like every Thursday saying, yeah. look, a session with me, you know, I just, that's not, that's not the point. Um, but I, this is compassionate of- marketing. <laughs> it yeah, is, this yeah. Is, it's called compassionate marketing. That's just something that I just, I just gave to live talk calls about that last week it's like you are just showing up and so that showing up in a meaningful way in a way that is with service at the heart and when people think they need or know that they need photos you are the person they think of that's or they were a beautiful Even example if they of that. Hired me, they refer me to other people because exactly. they feel connected to me as a human exactly ah oh, brilliant brilliant you are a smart businesswoman Lindsay <laughs> very smart um so you have a son and you are you know, doing all of these different things. Here's a question that I know many people always want to, they always are wondering, those of us that have started our own businesses, have things that are running pretty, pretty smoothly and regularly. What is your take on work-life balance? And do you think it exists? Are you able to achieve that? Speaking of there, came the chair. Oh, lineup, my husband just walked in to say, Mary texted him to say, I can't be heard. <laughs> In the face. Oh, Elena what? needs to take out her AirPods and turn them off. Mary says, and he's texting my husband. That's how often we talk. Oh no! Oh my gosh, that's so funny. Okay, well, it's okay. It's, it's recording here, but um, let me do that. Hold but on. If it's recording and it, oh, it's on the Zoom. You think it can be heard? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Say it again. Hello. Yeah, but it's still coming through. You've got to turn the AirPods off. Then. Can you hear me now? I can hear you. Yeah, I'm now it's working. Here. Oh, Mary, okay. she's probably been trying to tell me too, and I had everything That's, turned off. When you said turn off your notifications, that was her, and I was ignoring them because I didn't know how to turn off the sound. Sorry, everybody. Yeah. Well, but it is it's the Facebook Live. <laughs> it's okay. Well, the Facebook Live part isn't working, but it's been recording here, so we'll have the audio for when we put it online. Anyways, I well, if you are here now, hopefully it started working. Started working now. This is not my first time having technical issues, except this morning, it wasn't my problem, it was someone else's, but, um, <laughs> shoot. Okay, well, anyways, I still wanna hear the, I wanna hear the answer to that question, and I feel like people will, ah, it's been such a good combo too, people will be curious to know the answer to that, and I'm just gonna make sure it's working now. Um, tell me, what what is your take on work-life balance? Do you think it exists? Um, theoretically, um, but I think everything in life has seasons. Um, so my son is 10 now. 
yeah. he's in school, you know, full time, but I still drop him off. You know, I'm still doing all the drop off and pick up at 8.30 in the morning and 2.45, 3 o'clock in the afternoon. So I, I take chunks when I can get them. Um, and I ask for help. Um, we live near all of his grandparents, which is one of the reasons we moved yeah. out of the city to be here. Um, so I lean on the people around me quite a lot and I do this full time. So I'm not trying to work full time or part time at another job and right. do this. Um, and for me, that really sort of helped my commitment uh, because yeah. I was all in, all in. So I had to be. Yeah. But, you know, I made more than half my income in Q4 last year. And I was I don't think I cooked a meal for my family from the end beginning end of August to like the end of November. <laughs> quite frankly, between you and, out and, husband cooking and you, I just, you know, those are things you just have to let some things go. And that was one of them. Um, but what you know, I, I always, do with my family in the fall. Yeah. Is that realistic? I'm not sure. I tell people that, you know, when it's, especially in, it, girls in my mastermind, when we're talking about business and, and balance and all that, I don't think balance exists. You said there's seasons. I think there's harmony. You know, you have the times where you're working really hard and times where you're not, but when, no matter what kind of a photographer you are, if you, if you photograph people, like not models, you're not doing commercial work, but if you're doing family or newborn, well, newborn, even newborn seems to be busier those times of year, but family and weddings, um, it is just busier from the months of like, it's not even April, really. I would say it's late May through the end of October. And there's just no getting around it. Like, I wish that my families would have their Christmas cards done in February for the following year. They won't. So you just kind of have to accept that, plan for it, you know, have the, and then know that other times of the year are going to be better. So, yeah, that's kind of how I see that. <laughs> Sorry, Facebook community that I had my AirPods in. That would be me that is making technical errors. She sounded great. And it's been recorded here on, uh, on, for the podcast, but <laughs> that's such a bummer. Um, so I guess what, what piece of advice would you give someone who wants to go full-time? Because you said that this is your full-time job. We do have a lot of women um, mostly women, but people in our community, I should say that are still working that other job. They'd like to make this a reality. Do you have any advice for them? Um, I would think first and foremost, how much money do you need to live? Yeah. and figure that out. And then, you know, that's sort of how you figure out your pricing and you back up to figure out what do you need to live? How many sessions do you have the bandwidth to do a year? Um, if, if you're just doing family, you know, it's sort of an easy division. Um, if you have really young kids, does that mean you need to hire sitters? And what is, you know, what does that mean for your family budget? Um, but for me, adding these two pieces, so having families and newborn as one portion of my business, branding is another. The other huge piece is branding is all weekday work which is, yeah. is something very seriously to consider if you have kids um, and you want to spend time with them on the weekend and you're not doing weddings. A lot of fall families are weekends. I mean, you can decide that you're not going to yeah. photograph on weekends, but most families have time to do that on the weekend. Totally. Um, and schools is all weekday work as well, with yeah. the exception of obviously the nights and weekends editing and organizing, but you can avoid that if you schedule it. Um, so I like having schools and branding on my weekdays and newborns. I do weekdays as well, because if they're on maternity leave, then it doesn't matter. Yeah. It can be a Tuesday morning. Um, so the only work that I do on the weekends are family sessions um, and the occasional event, um, you know, for a nonprofit, if I'm supporting a nonprofit or doing um, branding work for them, those are typically weekend events, but, you know, a couple of those a year. Yeah. That's what, that's one of my favorite things about schools too, especially at the my, my height of my school photography when I was really doing it a lot, you know, we did like five or six schools a year, but that was all during the weekday. And I was able to convince most of them, not the big public schools, the bigger schools have to have it done in the fall, but even so you're doing it during the week, but most of them, all my preschools, I'm able to have, do them in like March or April. And so again, that's not only during the week, but it's during my, my, you know, slow time of year too. So that really helps with that. <laughs> it really, really helps when they need them in the fall. It's a little more tricky. It's doable, but it's a little more tricky kind of where I am right now. So <laughs> good. So how, how, um, what is your volume? Like how many family sessions do you do a year? Do you know the, that, that number? I should know that number. It's okay. Actually, it's okay. On Friday, I actually had a me meeting with a bookkeeper <laughs> to hire out bookkeeping because it's been something I've been putting off oh, yeah. doing. Um, so I really do want to get a handle. One of, one of the big things I wanted to think through is how much income am I actually bringing in in each category of my business? Um, and I have ballpark ideas of what that looks like. As I said, you know, I knew off the top of my head that more than half my income was made in the last quarter of the year, which yeah. is staggering when you think about the number of hours. Um, mm -hmm. But I would say at this point, um, schools is at least a third of my income. Um, 
if not more. Um, and then it's sort of split relatively evenly between family and branding. Yes. Um, so I actually, I should know the answer to that. I don't know how many families I photograph here. <laughs> that's okay. I'm just curious. That's because that's just that tends to be nowhere near as many as you, you were doing at the height. That's for sure. I'm bringing it down. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be about 50 this. Well, it's, I think it's me about 60 this year, which is like half of what I normally do. So which feels good. It's time to do that for me. It's time for me to yeah. sort of bring that down a little bit, dial it down. Well, you're doing so much teaching too. So yeah, so much of all kinds of things are happening right now. Um, so I'm looking at our comments now. Sorry, people. Sorry about that, everybody. And you can hear her now. You can hear her now. Oh, good. And you can does see anybody have any questions? I'd be happy to answer. Yeah. Does them. anyone have any questions for Lindsay? Anyone that's here live? And I'm going to come see if they're who's here live. It's always hard for me to be able to tell. Um, Lindsay, okay, was, everybody left. <laughs> I know. Sorry, Mary. That was my fault. I think they're coming back in now, though. Um, so I'm looking to see. Now that we're back, I'm trying to read them without turning on the audio. I know it's hard to do. It's yeah, very hard. No, it's like just everybody saying they can't hear us. <laughs> you know, that's, that would be that would be me having the Monday that I'm having. I should probably not do these on Mondays for that exact reason. Uh, there's a few people here. So um, I guess my, what I would say too, is that if you haven't been noticing, Lindsay is a community leader. She's in here with the best advice, gives video content all the time. So if you don't already know Lindsay, like pay attention. She is here. She is amazing. Um, where can people find you? What, what's on the horizon for you right now? Um, I had my first speaking engagement this January, which was um, really lit me up. I really enjoyed it. So I'm applying to do some more speaking next year. Um, received, I got my first sponsor to do that. So I, I flew to this past conference on my own and now I have a sponsor who's going to pay for my travel, which is really exciting so that I can do more of that. Um, and I'm really kind of enjoying teaching. I just keep getting inquiries for mentorship calls or, you know, a thousand and one questions on Instagram DMs and um, so I may come up with like a structure, structured sort of hourly mentoring call situation if people have specific questions, because I am getting kind of mired and lost in the, I mean, I love helping people. Um, but you know, at a certain point <laughs> I have to focus on my business too. So I've got to find a balance for that, but I've been enjoying doing that. Yeah. Um, and sure. I have two, hopefully I mean, I'm in negotiation for a, a really big school, um, which would be a big deal, uh, a life touch high school that um, I'm actually uh, an alum of this prep school and it's 530 kids um, and, and a branding branding work for another large prep school in my area that I shouldn't even be talking about it yet because I don't have any signed contracts, but. Oh, um, that's, how you, that's good, speak it true, speak it true. <laughs> yeah, but it's, it's something that's been coming for the last two years and I'm really excited on so many levels to be involved with my old school and taking over for Life Touch and, um, really showing them what school photography should look like. So, um, I've done a big, have you ever done any public schools? This will be first time. I have not. I've only done private Montessori's, um, and this, these would be private boarding high schools. The other two. They're private. Oh, okay. But, but still, even so I, I was going to, I guess I mean, have you done any that have a high school level? I've done, I've done a public school that had about 600 kids. And then I did a private school that had about 900 kids. And, um, that was my biggest school. My biggest challenge with the big school, I actually photographed all of the kids myself. I just did it over a couple of days. The biggest challenge was all of the weird back end stuff that they needed that like um, the littler schools don't like certain IDs and IDs and naming the, the files in a certain way. And, and we did it, but it was, <laughs> it was a lot of work, but we were able yeah. to do it. So it wasn't the volume uh, wasn't that bad. And it is a lot of money. You make a lot of money at those schools because especially the first year, they're like blown away by how much better it is than, than the, you know, how, what they're used to, but it's a lot, it's a lot of work, but it'll be very, very much rewarding. I think you'll enjoy it. I think you'll be really good at it. Yeah. I'm excited about it. <laughs> That's awesome. So well, I, you can find me and I didn't answer that. Um, yeah, where can they so find you? My I'm I in my DMs on Instagram pretty much daily, which is Lindsay Victoria Photography, at, um, and that's my website as well and, and my Facebook. But I spend more time on Instagram than Facebook. Yeah, everyone does these days, don't they? Well, we'll make sure to put that in the comments. And I'm really sorry that I had my AirPods in and that messed things up for you guys. But this will be the audio is all recorded, and so um, on my end. So once we get it up and up and running, it'll you'll be able to listen to it on on iTunes and anywhere that we, um, start blasting these things. Uh, and anything else that you would like, do you have any, any freebies, anything you'd like them to be able to get their hands on? Is there anything like that going on right now? 
Not yet. Um, I mean, I, I have a gear list, but I, you know, for what I use for schools, um, if, if they're interested in that, um, shoot me a DM and I'll be happy to share that with you. Okay, cool. All right, Lindsay, thank you so much. You stay on here for a second. I'm just going to stop it on Facebook for a minute. Okay. That is like, it could not be more me in a nutshell. This is why I've been that's so weird though. I, I, I wouldn't, I wasn't even going to put the AirPods on, but it's, it's snatched Bluetooth up. Bluetooth synced it. Yeah. It, yeah. And so I grabbed them because I didn't want to mess anything up. Ugh, I'm so so the only thing I'll say is when you're finished, double check it and make sure that you can actually hear it on the zoom. I mean, you should be able to, but if yeah. for some reason it didn't work, we can just do it again and yeah. we don't have to put it on Facebook live. We'll just fix it and do it again. It should totally be fine, but I will, I will double check it and make sure. Um, that's exciting that you are mentoring. You know, we have, I have a level two group coaching program starting like next week that we're talking about just that. So that's pretty awesome that you're doing that. Yeah. I've got to figure out how to structure it, but, um, I, it was almost similar to when the first person asked me to take pictures and said, I'd be happy to pay you. I had a woman who was asking me a whole ton of questions and she finally said, I, I, I really appreciate your time. I'm happy to pay you for a call if you'd like. Um, so yeah, know, she was very kind. She's like, I don't want to take advantage of any more of your time. You've been so kind. That's 100% um, how it starts. So, um, but yeah, I'm going to figure out what it would look like for real. If I was going to offer it as a thing. That is 100% how it starts. I'm go. That's good for you. You're good at scaling a business. You should definitely be doing that. Awesome. I'm trying little by little. So I appreciate all your support and encouragement. Of course, of course. Yeah. All right. Well, um, I'm sorry that that, ooh, that was some good little nuggets that you were putting in there too, that they would have loved to hear. So if it, um, actually I'm, what I'm going to do right now is it's loading, right? It's saving. Oh, no, if it's recorded, you could probably download it and then upload it. Onto I was going to say, that's what I'm going to do. Yeah. yeah. I'm going to see if it recorded it all over here correctly. And if it did, I'm going to do that right now. So, um, and one quick question for you before I let you go, um, as I'm applying for speaking engagements,